Australia has imported a lot of stuff from the United States, whether it be warmongering, massive oversized utes and SUVs, Trump MAGA political discourse. You are fake news. Fake news, fake news, fake news. Stop the fake news. <sighs> Or, of course, car-dependent urban planning, it's fair to say America's influence on Australia has mostly been bad. But arguably the worst import we've taken from the United States is Solenopsis Invicta, otherwise known as the Red Imported Fire Ant, and it wasn't even their own to start with. Native to South America, fire ants were first detected in Richlands, in Brisbane's southwestern suburbs in 2001. A super pest, if left unchecked, their potential impact on the Australian economy has been estimated at $45 billion over 30 years, affecting everything from agriculture to community sports, infrastructure and the environment. A national eradication program has been underway since the infestation was detected in 2001 and it has been stepped up a notch this year as the spread edges ever closer to the New South Wales border. As a resident of Brisbane, you can play your part and one of the most effective ways I've found to identify and report fire ants is, you guessed it, by bike. While nobody knows for sure how fire ants first arrived here, the most accepted theory is that they hitched a ride on a shipping crate from the United States and went undetected, enjoying the fertile soils of Brisbane suburbs. A national eradication program was formed, and while early efforts were looking promising, the ants spread further than anticipated, and by 2016 more than $330 million had been spent trying to achieve eradication. In 2017, a new 20 year plan was adopted at a cost of $440 million, and that sought to start at the western edge of the infestation in the Lockyer Valley, preventing them from reaching the food bowl of the Darling Downs. It was in 2017 that Cyclone Debbie wreaked havoc on southeast Queensland and caused flooding in the Logan River. That added a new complexity to the fire ant problem, as they used their ability to form a raft and float downstream, and so in the subsequent years infestation spread rapidly into the Logan area and northern Gold Coast. In early 2023, they were detected on Minjeriba, Stradbroke Island, leading to a combined community ranger and fire ant program response. While the battle has been quite successful in the west, the front line is now at the south, as the ants have reached just 5 kilometres from the New South Wales border. If there's one thing the COVID-19 pandemic showed us, it's that state borders are not the place where you can expect collegiate interstate cooperation, and fire ants can't be controlled with border passes any more than cookers and anti-vaxxers could. The new 2023-2027 to eradication plan is estimated to cost around $600 million, and while all states and the Commonwealth have backed the plan, so far only Queensland with $61 million and New South Wales with $95 million have committed funding towards it. This plan will focus on the edges of the infestation and heavily treat inside it, with the hope to contain the infestation and then work inwards. All up, this will mean well over $1 billion has been spent on trying to eradicate fire ants, something no country has ever achieved before. But this is a super pest that if left unchecked will cause massive damage to our economy and our way of life. The current cost estimate is that impacts from fire ants could be as much as $2 billion per year. That's almost double what's been spent in 23 years of eradication efforts to date. While the scientific consensus is that eradication is still possible, we have to keep trying. And that's where you come in. While the eradication effort will focus on the edges of the infestation, those of us who live in the infested area need to do our part to identify them where we find them, allowing the fire ant program staff to knock down their numbers. The less prevalent ants are in our community, the less likelihood we have of spreading them further. Red imported fire ants, and they're rampant across a lot of southeast Queensland, particularly west of the city. Um, and this time of year, as things get colder... Hey, it's uh, Future Chris here. This was filmed in May, so just before winter when things were getting colder. Um, it's now August where things are starting to get warmer, but it's still a good time to look for nests. They start to get a little bit easier to spot because ants don't like the cold. Who does? And so they build their nests up a little bit higher. So if you can see this here, you can see this mound right next to the road. Um, and I spotted this one as I was riding past. They, they sort of look a bit different to normal ants' nests. Like there's no obvious entry holes. You, you usually can't see much in the way of ants on the outside of them. But um, you know, often like lo loose mounds of dirt and they've got grass poking out of them. But the, what you can do, you, when you see one, 
you pull over and stop. Grab a stick, don't use your finger. Give it a poke. And you'll see there, a whole lot of little red ants, or browny red ants, flying out of there trying to get me. So this is a meat ant nest. They're a native ant. And you can see that they're big ants. They've got, they're all over the nest. There's open holes. They're very different to fire ant nests, but you will see a lot of these around Brisbane. Now this kind of looks like a mound of dirt, a bit like a fire ant nest, but the big difference, it is rock hard. So that's a termite nest. So you'll see a lot of them around. They're nothing really to worry about unless they're in your house. So fire ant nests are quite distinctive from those other nests. They're soft mounds, they're easy to poke, and the ants are very aggressive once they come out. So they're sort of brown with you know darker abdomen, sort of a light coppery coloured body. Uh, and if you look really closely, you'll see that they're varying sizes. There's some that are tiny, some that are a bit bigger. And that's sort of the telltale sign of a fire ant. So if you do come across them, doing your civic duty, what you should do is report them to the Red Ant Fire Ant Program. And you do that with your trusty phone. Get a photo as close as you can, hopefully showing the ants. Then you go to ants.daf qld.gov.au I'll put the link in the description and you go report fire ants and you fill in their form if you add a photo you don't have to add a lot of all the other information that they ask for because that's enough and what they'll do they'll get that report they'll come and have a look at and you know find the site where you found them they'll take a sample and they'll make sure that it's fire ants and they'll leave bait behind to knock them down um, and then if they are fire ants they'll probably come back and poison the nest later So the fire ant program is still trying to eradicate fire ants from southeast Queensland. So, but they are prevalent in the western suburbs. Um, I spot them quite a lot on my bike rides, especially this time of year, because as I say, they build their nests up a bit higher so that they're easier to spot from a distance and at speed, not the number of fast on my bike. So it's not much of a hassle to stop and take a photo and, and get a sample. So fire ants are a particularly nasty pest. They call them a super pest for a reason. So one impact for humans is that they really sting nasty. So one fire ant bite, probably not so bad, but you can see by how many of them flood out of the nest when you poke it, they bite you by the hundreds. And it gives you a feeling like it's a burn and it leaves you with blisters or like a, you know, like you get after a burn as well. Um, but they're really bad for, for livestock. They kill pets, they kill livestock. They get into electrical fixtures and they cause infrastructure damage and they, they can cause billions of dollars of damage if they're left unchecked. So it's really important we eradicate them. The program's been going for about 20 years, but they're still hopeful that, that we can eradicate them. So let's keep doing our bit to help them out. Because I'm a little bit of a pro at identifying fire ants, uh, I spoke to local councillor James Mackay last year, um, and he actually gave me some uh, fire ant bait as well. That they're encouraging people that if you do, you are pretty sure that they're fire ants you can um, treat them yourself but it's very important that you're careful with that fire ant bait if it gets into waterways it's really bad for fish so uh, don't go spreading it willy-nilly you only need a little bit but generally if you just report them straight through the program they'll come and do the work so you don't have to worry about it here you go little anties so you don't need much only about a tablespoon or so for a nest so what the ants do is that they take that food, it's, in, it's almost irresistible to them, it's like corn grit and soy, it's really lovely. And they take it back into the nest, it renders the queen infertile for about six weeks and usually in that time it's enough for the colony to die off. What you will find is that rarely is there just one nest, so in there, all the way along the gutter here. Oops, I think I just disturbed some uh, larvae there. So don't over disturb them, um, just enough so that you can see them. You can see also up here where I stopped my bike. There's still more along here. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Here's a nice big one again. Give it a stick. 
and out they come. So usually if you find one nest, you'll find more. So while you're out riding around Brisbane, particularly in the western suburbs, keep your eye open for fire ants, take a photo, report them to the program, and we can do our little bit to eradicate these sleeper pests. Ride safely, drive rarely, and I'll catch you next time.